I'm the Commissar. We are watching Forged Alliance Forever. And today, I have custom 2v2 action for you. Two players on each team facing off to see who will come out on top. The time is 1000 years into the Infinite War. The name of the place is Adaptive Sandy Valley. So we have got what I'm thinking of as the purple team up here in the top left, even though Faf disagrees and thinks of it as the white team. Oh no, it's the purple team. And we have the pink team down here in the bottom right. Going first for the purple team, in purple we have Blue Dream. Who isn't in blue? He's in purple. Great. Anyway. Blue Dream is Seraphim, he's 1400 rated. And his ally, today's highest rated player by some way, is Grimplex. He's playing as Cybrans, he's 2600 rated, and he's in white. And down here on the pink team, we have Skill Issue, who is 2000 rated, and Cybron in Baby Pink. And we have Paradox of War, who is 1900 rated, and also Cybron. He's in Bright Pink. So that's going to be quite interesting. We've got two players of about the same rating and a much wider gap here. Will Grimplex carry, or will he be an early target due to his high rating? leaving Blue to try and hold the line. Let's find out. Meanwhile, quick look at the map. Adaptive Sandy Valley. I've played it once or twice, and because it's adaptive, different ones of these points can spawn with different numbers of mixes, depending on who's playing. This up here on the plateau can be a starting point. This back position can be a starting point for air. I think that's all the actual starting points. Although, presumably, it can go up to more, and maybe you'll get one here, and so on. Anyway, it's got these salt pans, and each of these salt pans has a decent amount of reclaiming. Not a huge amount, but worth picking up, and a little bit on the cliffs above. Outside the main base, there's only a small scattering of mixes, but they're still going to be important, especially these ones up in the corners. Now... We have early aggression out from Paradox, who has sent a Mantis and a Scout to try to pick up any of Blue's expanding engineers going to these slightly further out mexes. Blue's put a Selene, and indeed a tank, to check whether anything's coming down the middle, but he hasn't expected this attack up the side. Well, now he has the Selene's going out to see what's coming, and it will see this raid from Paradox, but one Selene isn't going to stop a Mantis, and the Mantis might be able to pick up this Engineer. Grimplex, already with his Air Factory producing an Interceptor, and that'll be useful because Skill wants to see what's going on and he sent his Scout over. The Mantis comes in for Paradox, what's it going to be able to achieve? This NG seems like an obvious kill. Down it goes, nice, but Blue has got a bomber out. I think he was going to send it in for early aggression, but he's brought it back to defend. However, the Mantis is proving effective at dodging, so Blue brings in a tank as well. Will the second engineer go down to the Mantis? Looks like no, because the Mantis has forgotten to move. However, Paradox already has a second Mantis Lab pair here, and a third one here, so that could be quite effective. This engineer is surely going to go down, though Blue's comm is not far away to defend from any further pressure. Meanwhile, that bomber has tried to go out and do some attacking work, but Paradox has an inti up and takes it out. Unfortunately for Paradox, that Tharm tank is still around, and okay, maybe he hasn't noticed the Mantis sneaks past if it gets in the back. That could be pretty rude, because there's nothing defending these mechs here. 
Meanwhile, Grimplex and Skill look set to meet in the middle here. Neither has much spam yet. Skill's going to put up a factory here. They're both going for the eco first, though. And this Mantis, I forgot the word for a moment, this Mantis was not spotted, and I think it's going to take at least one mech, maybe two. This NG would also be a nice kill, though I don't think it's going to deny the Hydro. Nah, it's just worried about mixes for the moment. And Paradox keeps tripling the Mantis in, just causing a little bit of a problem. Good expansion NGs from Paradox coming out here. We just see on the left there that Mantis finally getting bombed. But I'm liking this drop. He's going to get early access to all this delicious reclaim there as well as those mexes, and Grimplex hasn't got down here. In fact, it looks like Skill is trying to take it for himself. So if Pink Team can pick up both corners, that is pretty nice. Little scuffle in the middle of a paradox and Blue. Blue falls back a bit. And Paradox still just sending his spam in this sort of area, forcing Blue to send units out to the side that I think he was hoping to mass in the middle for a push. In the bottom left, Grimplex and Skill have spam, but Skill is being hit by this Jester, and there's no AA in here for Skill as yet, which is quite means the Jester just out to harass is pretty nice, and this engineer is delicious prey. However, Grimplex is fighters, inties, that's the word, have been stuck a bit behind and haven't been on point to defend. However, that one inti does fall down before it can take out the jester, and this jester, though it's in the red, is still able to hit the NGs and skills spam, and Grimplex is doubling down on that, bringing in a few more jesters. All that raiding for Paradox, plus this expansion though, means that while Skill, Skill and Grimplex are pretty evenly matched in Eco, there's a 20 or 30 lead for Paradox over Blue, and that could be pretty crucial. However, Paradox is losing a bit of his spam here as Blue sends in his, but Paradox's comm is on hand to help out, and that should be more than enough to handle this T1 group, whereas Blue's comm is all the way back here and not able to help. Also, Paradox has just finished Tech to Land, which, if you can bring some Rhinos or Hoplites in, might be doing pretty well for him against this T1 spam from Blue. Paradox coming into the middle with a few tanks. This is nice. He's taken out two Mexes for Grimplex, but Grimplex also already has T2, and these Hoplites are probably going to be more than enough to deal with the Mantis. If they weren't, the three jesters from Grimplex certainly are. And he looks like he's trying to get more work done with the jesters. NG definitely easy pickings for the jesters, and I'm enjoying the amount of support that Grimplex is sending in terms of inties. This is four NGs, and they are going to hurt Paradox when they go down. He's trying to put up an anti-air turret, but against that horde of jesters, it's nowhere near enough. Paradox doesn't have anywhere near the amount of air to fight this amount of air from Grimplex either. Now, Blue is pushing quite a big bunch of spam forward, but he's got to watch out for Paradox's com, which has its own little horde of spam. Looks like Paradox hasn't been producing much T2 yet, but in combination with the com, this T1 is more than a match for this T1, but like ships in the night or whatever the phrase is, they are going to pass each other. Paradox pushing in here, Blue pushing in here. Down here, Skill is taking out some of Grimplex's units, but Skill has to be careful. He is naked, and there's T2 in here, these Hoplites. And Hoplites do do a lot of damage, and Skill has not brought his spam into support. I am not sure I like that. Grimplex loses his jesters, but in the process, he's going to win air. Skill is bringing in T2 to match Grimplex's, and Grimplex falls back a bit. Grimplex setting up a little emplacement there with his com. Blue pushes in against Paradox, and that is pretty nice. He could get some 
next kills. If he can get one of these T2 mixes, that would be amazing. But he's falling back because I think he's seen Paradox's com coming in here. And that's a decent raid from Paradox. Blue has enough to stop it, but it is enough to distract Blue. And we've got some nice bombers here hitting Paradox's mixes. Looks like he's taken out one or two there. And there's nothing here to defend. Taking out the NGs would also be delicious, but it looks like he's just queued up a hit on all the mexes. That's three so far, and I have no doubt we're about to see a fourth. Indeed we are. A little bit of posturing between skill and grimplex, but no real damage. Meanwhile, these bombers are going to take out yet another. That's one, two, three, four, five they've managed so far. Finally, one of the two goes down, as does the other, but definitely quite good. Page for themselves. Didn't take any NGs though, which I think I'd have preferred. Over here, Skill and his tanks are battling Grimplex's T1 spam plus hoplite. So, big on the hoplite, supported by Mantis. I've always thought that you need more rhinos in there, but obviously Grimplex has something like four times my rating three times now but so um he surely knows what he's doing I guess the mantis will defend while the hoplites backed up by the scouts to give them their extra range will be able to make sure they can get some damage in and look these boys aren't getting any shots from skill the they can't advance because there's enough mantis there oh but skill is pushing in with his com he is in the yellow though and a few rounds of hoplite fire might be a problem for him Blue pushing in in the top right. I think he's going to get some good damage against Paradox's Eco. He's going to have to watch out for this PD. But he has got artillery in there, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. He takes out Amex and continues advancing. I expect to see more damage there. And this is just shooting into the cliff. This point defense is not going to get much done. Meanwhile, Blue, with his com, who now has gun, is pushing in on Paradox, and he's got some T2, he's got some Ilshavos, which I love. Paradox has, I think, more T2, and Blue's got to, if he wants to do this, Blue has to have his com near the front to be able to absorb a bit of the hits and get some overcharges in, but he hasn't. Blue has lost a bit to that point defence, but and these bombers will help out. I don't think there's much anti-air, if any, in there. Oh yeah, there is one. But it has got some damage done, which is nice. Skill is going for the gun upgrade. Grimplex already has the gun upgrade and is pushing in. Will Grimplex be able to force a cancel for Skill? Blue has fallen back a bit because Paradox has a lot of T2 here and with the support of Stealth, the Hoplites... Wait, no, the, he's um, Sarah, the Ilshis will still be pretty useful to be fair because their main advantage, unlike the Hoplites, is not range. Blue is going to push in a little bit again, which could be good. Grimplex, meanwhile, is advancing with his com on skill and skill hasn't yet finished the gun upgrade and most of these NGs couple of T2 tanks there. Grimplex could do a lot if he pushed in with these, I'm sure of it. But Grim isn't pushing and Skill is massing a big chunk of Rhino T2 tanks here and finish his gun, he's on his way to stealth. Blue has managed to clean up a little bit up here. He's got to watch out for this point defense. And he's going to get in range with it. And these Psalms are just going to die. If he notices it with the Zooey, oh, the Zooey can kill the mechs and then kill the point defense. So he's wasted a few Psalms. Skill has completed the stealth and pushes forward. But Grimplex has a lot of firepower in there. Rhinos. Lots and lots of rhinos. And he is. His com is... I don't know if Skill's going to survive this. Skill has misjudged this. Boom! Down he goes, leaving Paradox all on his own against Purple Team. 
However, Paradox has Tech 3 out and might be about to get some revenge because these are loyalists mixed in with the hoplites and Blue's forces are going to be depleted fast by this army. Blue is falling back. He hasn't really got anything to take this. On this side, he also has Brixter's Paradox and that would be more than enough to defend against the hoplites that Grimplex has in the area if there were a micro and it looks like he's doing a good job oh no they have stopped moving they need to keep moving so that fewer hoplite shots hit them but to be fair paradox is also microing these forces here against blue looks like he's decided to leave blue to it though and push in with his whole army against grimplex nice tactical missile from grimplex which is sending shots out at looks like this mechs he'll be able to take out one or two t2 mechs with this He takes out one and it's going to be loaded again soon. But this is quite a worry for Grimplex. His com is in the yellow, having taken half damage against these just these two bricks. One of them dies to the T2 army, but there are more dropping in. And then there's this whole army, Loyalists. And a couple of Rhinos coming in. Grimplex might actually be in a little bit of danger here. With overcharge, you should be able to handle the loyalists. But we've got Corsairs coming in from Paradox. And he's going for a comm snipe, no question about it. Corsairs, a couple of T1 bombers to back it up. There's a little bit of flak in there for Grimplex. But Grimplex is down into the red. But a rank of vet saves him, bringing him back up into the yellow. He's shooting at those tanks. And he's actually cleared up all the land units. But there's still those Corsairs to worry about. Grimplex has a lot of interceptors, but he's back down into the red thanks to the continued Corsair passes. More bricks are moving up and Grimplex will need to just back away and not take the fight. Back up into the yellow again thanks to his three vets plus regen, but that's a short-lived reprieve as he's down into the red as the Corsairs continue their passes. And I don't think he's actually got enough inties left to save himself. The Corsairs will just whittle him down. 2,000 hit points. Cheeky little T1 bomber is taken out, but of course, don't forget the Corsairs do have anti-air too. They're fighter bombers. And Grimplex is only on 2,000 hit points. Is he going to make it out? T1 bomber comes by. More Corsairs are being sent in all the time. Paradox really wants this kill, and given Grimplex's rating, you can understand that. If he has to fight only blue the game's lowest rated player he will feel a lot better 400 hit points one more hit will do it Grimplex dodging back and forth look at this sneaky dodge but no boom Grimplex is down and we're on to a 1v1 but one of those ones blue he has got a decent force on the doorstep of paradox he's got Elshies in here but and he's got bombers to help with the T1 point defence, but he's got to worry about this T3 army. Paradox has T3, and while this has the numbers on Blue's side, this has the tech on Paradox side. There are bricks, there are loyalists, and the loyalists have the stun feature when they die, stunning nearby enemy units, so he's just walking in with the loyalists to stun the Urshis while the bricks pick them off, and this force is not actually going to be getting out of there, I don't think. That is pretty brutal, and it is... Now, Blue actually does have a little bit of an eco lead. Eco mass collected, 40 eco in the lead for Blue. But he's just dumped something like 8,000 mass. Sure, some of it is stuff that Paradox lost there, but a lot of it is Blue's. 8,000 mass that Paradox can just pick up and eat. And that would be very nice for Paradox. Blue does have T3 of his own. He's starting with air defence, knowing well what happened to Grimplex. I don't blame him. Has he even... Interesting. 
And there, there it is. That's almost exactly what I was looking for. Blue has only now started tech to air. He's at a big air disadvantage. And also, as well uh, on the land, he's only recently got T3. Paradox has much more T3. So, tech disadvantage for Blue, but he's got the eco advantage still. Can he turn that into something big? Paradox pushes up with a bunch of bricks from the south. Not much to hit yet, but um, I see some pings going down from skill, and he's not wrong. There's T2 mexes there that Paradox might be able to take out. This little push with two bricks will easily be stopped. It's just going to distract Blue and maybe stop him noticing some of this shenanigan here. And this mech is under attack just by a lightning tank until in comes a brick. Wait, that's not a lightning tank, that's Cybron. Either way, in it comes. And this is also quite nice. While Blue comes this way to defend against these boys, he then has to worry about a slightly bigger brick push coming up here towards this production. That mix is going down. If Paradox can take out some of this production as well, that would be nice. And indeed he does. A T3 production facility goes down. Factory, that's the word. Production facility. Ha. And he's actually got enough here that he could push in a bit harder. But he's not choosing to at the moment. And that's quite a lot of bricks coming down from Blue which will be in a good position to defend. However, I do see Blue pushing on the right there. So, in comes Blue with a significant force. A few Othiums, a decent number of lightning tanks to defend against the air and a lot of spam to back it up. Meanwhile, on the left, Paradox has pushed forward and taken out that other T3 factory. And don't know why Blue is retreating here, but if he retreats any further, this lone brick might be able to claim another couple of mexes. Blue is being quite tentative with his push here, and I think that might be a mistake. This brick has just taken the mechs and falling back. Nice, and Paradox advances a bit further over here. Blue pushes. Paradox has a decent amount of stuff here, but I like the fact that he's also going around the side with these units. While Paradox defends in the middle, Blue might get some nice damage done over there. Over here, Blue has enough to force Paradox to think twice. He has taken out that second factory, but he's falling back, and no further damage has been taken on this side. Lots of Corsair defense from Paradox, but he's moving away when he sees the amount of lightning tanks that... Blue has got mixed in there, but Blue is falling a little bit back. However, his raid around the side is getting work done. It's been noticed there are renegades for having a fight, and Blue has pushed forward to take advantage. Oh, the courses have come over here now, and in combination with these bricks, that should be more than enough, though I think these forces should also move in and help out. I assume that's a ping for the reclaim. No, it's a ping to move in and fight here with those bricks. And Paradox has actually lost quite a few mexes here, but this could be a little too bold. Paradox has brought his common. His common's naked, so that's quite bold going against T3. But the Corsairs come back for a huge hit on these units, and I don't think those are going to survive. The brick push continues over here. Paradox hasn't got any more units here, and what there have been have gone off there. But he's pushing in, he's getting some damage done, and Blue pushes again. Blue is charging in, and these boys, I think, are going just to be taken out by those bricks, so let's focus over here on the main fight. And Blue has also charged in through the middle. Paradox has excellent air defense there's a, a couple of lightning tanks in there but and a couple of flax which is good and he is hitting mixes here now so it is going to cost paradox some of his eco and look at that blue is now 60 70 eco ahead 
and quite possibly going to get more but again he's left heaps and heaps and heaps of reclaim as his attack is cleared up look at that 8,000 2,000 that's like 20,000 reclaim in that area and that is going to be very good for paradox if he can pick it up there is something like 10,000 over here for blue and another 15,000 if you count that area but He's only got this one engineer here rebuilding the mechs rather than sending this vast horde of engineers in to suck them up which I think would be very beneficial for Blue. And he's a little bit ahead in Total Eco Collected but not much. Little scuffle in the middle. Raid out here. Interesting that they're actually sharing the bottom left corner without much. Oh, but what's this? There's a cheeky pair of loyalists that Paradox has positioned up here. Is he going to remember them? Is he going to do something with them? They've killed a couple of mexes, but as it is, they're not getting much done. Blue sends another unit round the side. And Paradox has prepared another NG drop to try and recolonize up here, but I don't think it's going to get much done, especially if it's still on the ground when this force comes sauntering by. Those loyalists advance. They don't take out the T3 factory, but they do take out a Mex. And these Mexes look like easy pickings if the loyalists continue. However, Blue has noticed them and he's sending T1 bombers. T1 bombers will take quite a while to work through some loyalists. And Paradox is absolutely going for that reclaim down here. Look at that horde of NGs. He's nearly caught Blue up in total mass collected. And Blue's answer to that is to go for the ARATs, which will keep him in the eco lead for sure. Othiums have now come and those loyalists, which could have got so much work done down here, they died to a couple of Othiums. Meanwhile, Paradox is pushing in mid. But he feels it's not worth the attack. He feels that Blue's got enough to defend. He's falling back a bit. Another raid on the left from Paradox, but that is four bricks there against three, and more stuff counters less stuff. It's been noticed more units are coming in here, and Paradox retreats a bit. Blue is also raiding on the other side, and again, it's been noticed Paradox is just going to clear it up. Now, I saw Grimplex saying to Blue there, don't use army, hide until Ethotha. And he is building an Ethotha. I don't think we've seen any experimental work coming up from Paradox yet. But Paradox is still amassing army and that might be enough bricks to stop a chicken. And kill a whole army, also make more AA. Actually, it's fine, says Grimplex and I'm seeing a couple of lightning tanks and a decent number of flak already in there for blue so you can see why he might think it's fine however that's a lot of courses there for paradox and blue is making a move or is, nope, I think he's just posturing This looks like it might be going somewhere, we'll follow it in a moment. And Blue has taken advantage of the reclaim, that's nice to see, there's almost nothing there now. And that chicken is nearly done. He's got two more queued up as you can see up there. And immediately starts work on the next one as the first chicken walks out. Now, is this going to be the hit that he needs? He is 100 eco per tick ahead of Paradox. So he's certainly got the eco, but has he got enough to break through? 
Paradox's defence is mainly bricks, couple of bouncers, and of course, this horde of Corsairs. Now, Corsairs do good work against chickens, so I would be very surprised if the first thing that Paradox does is not smack it with a heap of Corsairs. And this, I don't like from Blue. I would be moving in with these units down here so as to distract while the chicken comes forward. The army needs to support the chicken, Grimplex pings it and forward it comes. And Grimplex is telling Blue to bring this army over here in order to join the fight, but the chicken has advanced a little bit unsupported. I don't like that. A wave of Corsairs comes in and the flak's way behind. Those Corsairs are just getting free damage in on the chicken. The chicken moves a little bit in order to make sure that it's got its army in support. Blue does have Tech 3 Air and he's got a few ASFs coming in, but the air advantage has been in the hands of Paradox all game and he easily clears up Blue's ASFs. Blue is pushing in here and he might get a bit of free damage done as the chicken hits Paradox's army. We saw the notification, Paradox has finished the Monkey Lord, but it's some way away and the longer that it isn't with this army, the more damage Blue can get done. Paradox is wisely retreating and we can see the monkey coming in here to support the army. Nice from idea from Grimplex, rather than charge the army, he, the chicken and the blues army is just coming across here where we can get eco damage basically for free. And where it can take out more bricks while the chicken regenerates without having to face all of this. The monkey comes in. There's a few bricks over here. Blue finishes another chicken up there. But the monkey opens up and it's got a little bit of an advantage thanks to earlier damage. And we also have whaler gunships. That chicken is not getting out of there. Down it goes. Does Blue have enough damage to actually kill this monkey or will it supporting of bricks be able to take it out. Blue thinks it's time to retreat and he's probably right. The energy signature will be doing a little bit of damage. However, that second chicken is already on its way forward. And meanwhile, Blue's been raiding down here. I like that. He's taken out a couple of mexes. But the Corsair support from the has been upgraded to Whaler support and Blue really needs to double down on his air production in order to be able to get things done. That said, he, Paradox is losing Mexes. Whether that amount of bricks is a, a worthy price to pay for three Mexes, I don't know, but he's paid it. And Blue does have some air grid being planned. And he's got a decent amount of stuff working on it. So he is aware that he needs more air, but will it be enough? Where's that monkey going? Is it planning a raid? Is it planning to try and hit Blue up here? It will certainly be a nasty surprise for these boys, but no, it's falling back because the chicken, the second chicken, has been seen. And in it comes, supported by Blue's army. It stops, able to get a couple of shots off here while it's out of range of the bricks. I like that. Now the monkey, of course, was already damaged by the previous chicken, so I think that now that Blue knows there's a monkey waiting there, that monkey is going to be the first order of the day and it's probably not going to survive. Down it goes. And now it's just this horde of bricks, but is that a big horde of bricks? The question was rhetorical, I will tell you, it is a big horde of bricks. And that chicken might be hard first to survive it if it is focused by the bricks and then the Iron Storm would hurt the rest of Blue's army. Whalers also coming in in support. But the chicken isn't actually taking much damage. He's focusing the army and that means that the chicken can get some decent 
area of effect shots hitting those bricks and it's already got 25,000 mass killed but now its hit points are shedding away Blue brings in a couple of ASFs trying to defend against it, the Whalers, but that's not enough and the second chicken goes down. But no surprise, we already have a third chicken on the way. And Blue still has an 80 eco advantage. This is this is great. However, I'll tell you what does beat chickens. Megaliths. Paradox has got a megalith two-thirds done. They're slow, he's building it at the back, so it'll take a time to bring it to, up to the front if the chicken will get there first, but when it does get there, that chicken is toast. Chicken on toast? That doesn't sound super great. That chicken is Kentucky Fried Chicken, and we will have to have Colonel Sanders on the line. This brick raid is met by the whalers and as we've noted with this horde of ASFs nearby there's nothing that Blue is going to be able to do about that. He needs to mix in more lightning tanks of which he hasn't got any. I mean maybe these engines could just put up a Sam now they finish getting the reclaim. There's a bouncer that'll help but he needs more to be able to counter that number of whalers. He's also got a couple of lightning tanks here and a decent amount of flak. I like that. This is not enough bricks to take on the chicken. Good reclaim here as the wrecks of the previous chickens and monkeys are being eaten up by Paradox. The whaler's going to make a play for the chicken but he's falling back towards his lightning tanks. and the whalers start taking lightning tank hits and they're going to fall back. They think it's not worth it and they're probably right. But that delay means that the Mega has finished and is coming forwards. When it arrives up at the front, that chicken will be no match for it. A Mega can take two chickens easily. And with that eco lead, I think Blue should be thinking of something like maybe a nuke or t 3 rt But at the moment, it's all going into chickens. And this air production, though he is building it, it isn't going up fast enough, in my opinion. He needs more. He needs it fast. And the chicken encounters that mega. And look at that. Look how quickly and beautiful kiting back from the Mega. Look how quickly the Mega is shredding the chicken. With the help of these whalers and these bricks. Although those whalers are going to be... And the chicken just flees. Nope, it's going to try and take a few bricks on the way out. But it's still falling back. Down into the red, it's not going to escape this, is it? Okay, maybe it is. It's faster than a Mega. It runs away with just 4,000 hit points remaining. And it looks like we're getting a counter push. With the Mega, with this horde of bricks and a little bit of air support, I don't think Blue's really got much to stop this. He's going to have to fall back and mass up something that can stop a Mega. And, well, if you can't beat him, join him. Blue's building his own Mega, but it's still nowhere near done, and he's going to have to fall back. And in that time, Paradox has built a second. The Whalers are out raiding around the left, looking for damage. Blue has been massing an army here, and it has got some anti-air in it. And the Whalers decide against it. Is Paradox waiting for his second Mega before he pushes in? He could be. And Blue is trying a bit of push. He's only killing NGs for now, and these. but there is a T3 Mex here that could be taken out if he gets in there, and if he's got enough anti-air to stop the Whalers. It's been noticed, but the whalers aren't coming. 
I don't think, does Paradox not think this is worth saving, perhaps? And I, we're keeping an eye here to see whether Paradox is going to push in with this ever-growing army. No, Blue doesn't push it. He's going to fall back. That T3 mix, I think he could have picked that up, but he chooses not to. And we've got that chicken coming forward, but it knows there's an almost full health crab here. So he wisely stops it before... We oh, and that's the already damaged one. He is repairing it. But I still think that, thanks to the Iron Storm, that's more of a liability there than it is an asset. And that crab is finished for... Blue. Here it comes, stomping forward, but it's slow. And by the time it gets to the front, I'm pretty sure that Paradox will... Okay, Paradox's second crap has gone over here. Is he going to push? I don't know if he knows that Blue's eco is so far ahead of his, but Paradox must surely know that he needs to get that damage done early if Blue's eco isn't going to run out of control, because Blue is back up to 40,000 total mass collected ahead. Cheeky little brick raid in the bottom left, taking out these mexes for Paradox, but this has no anti-air and the whalers are going to shred it. One might almost say that that's a bit of overkill. But, you know, overkill is still kill, and so those bricks are indeed killed. They're not making it out of that alive. And here comes the push from Paradox. He advances. And the Mega from Blue has arrived. And Paradox's second Mega is all the way down here. So Paradox is forced to fall back. The damaged chicken and the new chicken are also with the Mega. But Paradox, as before, has so much more army. And the Whalers are coming in to hit Blue's Mega. However, that's a lot of anti-air and the whalers retreat. And Paradox's Mega is taking free damage due to poor facing. I think Paradox will lose his first Mega, but his second has come onto the scene. Indeed, he does lose the first Mega, and immediately the second becomes the target. But, here comes the third. And it's time for a bit of a crab fight. Look at that. Crabs fighting crabs. Crabs and chickens. Surf and turf and cluck. What's the turf in here? Is a brick like a cow? Not really. If there were any faff unit that you think would be a cow what would it be tell me in the comments below but tell me when you've watched this because we now have blues mega about to go down and it is just one shot off killing the mega from paradox here which was so close to dying but got a rank of veteran c just before that last shot hit so that means that we now have one healthy Mega and one damaged Mega from Paradox against one damaged Chicken from Blue. And again, my money's on multiple Megas versus one Chicken. And is Blue going for anything like a Game Ender? I'm not seeing it. He's got another Mega under construction. He's got another Chicken under construction. If Paradox knew, maybe he'd be pushing. But, until Blue does something with this eco advantage, which is still up there, an advantage of 100 per tick, and he's now, what's that, 40,000, nearly 50,000 mass ahead? What's he going to do? How's he going to survive this multiple mega push? Well, he's trying another raid here, down in the bottom left. So after that mighty Megalith mashup in the middle, we've got to look down here where, with the Megalith no longer defending, 
Lil Ken simply push in, and in he pushes. He should be able to hit this T3 Max, which will help his huge eco lead. This production will also be nice to take out, but that is what, 25, 30 whalers coming in? We're talking two DPS worth of Monkey Lord raining down from the skies from those whalers. And he does take out the mechs and the factory. But the whalers are going to eat them up. However, in come ASFs from Blue. And Paradox hasn't responded yet. He's only got a few. Ah, here comes the response. And that's, that's quite the response. Blue doesn't want to risk it and flees which is wise I think he would have lost the fight but it does mean that the whalers are free to just come back and smack down these poor old bricks there's not much flap left in there if any and so I don't think we're going to see any more work from these bricks it's a long walk to anywhere they can get damage done up here at the top the megaliths are bombarding Blue's base. And it's worth noting that for like the majority of the game, all the action was down here on Paradox's side of the map. Blue was pushing in, he was getting damage done, he was hurting mexes, but Paradox was just slowly building up, defending only where he had to. And now he's got this huge army in blue, despite that massive eco lead, 120 now. He's got 120 eco lead, 60,000 total mass ahead, and yet it's Paradox who has an experimental army on blue's doorstep, and blue who's scrambling to defend with a couple of chickens and a mega against two megas and a vast horde of bricks. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. My money's on two megas against two chickens. Oh, this one's about to die. Boom, down it goes, and the second chicken is now just meat for the table. A delicious chicken pie. Actually, no, it's so hot, it's more of a chicken vindaloo. Although it might be saved by the terrain. With 300 hit points remaining, the chicken is saved by the terrain. Nice. And Paradox already reclaiming his Mega Rex. That's lovely behaviour. And the army creeps forward. Round here, this Mega is going to be able to get some shots in. And this Mega has actually been quite badly damaged. But still, there's all these bricks. There's another Mega. The terrain is defending both sides now, look at that. Oh, couple of shots sneaking over there. And unless he returns fire on this mega, Blue's gonna lose this one. Oh, but the chicken, the chicken that had just 300 hit points, sneaks up, tops over the cliff there, unloads its plasma, and boom, takes out a mega, lovely. I mean, sure, it's killed by the other mega instantly, 3,000. Four hit points. Boom. That mega goes down, leaving this one on 29,000, which is still a lot. Another mega's on its way, but the same is true for Paradox. And the ongoing crab battle is looks like it's going to be resolved in Paradox's favour. There are a few whalers now from Blue as well, but that's a lot more whalers from Paradox. And Paradox also has air control and Blue's air wasn't in position anyway, and the whalers don't even take out this damaged mega before they are shredded. And this mega, well, it's shooting, sure, but it's surrounded by bricks from all sides that can't fire in all directions at once. Paradox loses his damaged mega, but Blue loses the new one, and there's still a mega for Paradox here. Look at this, this is utterly brutal. Paradox biding his time, taking all the attacks from Blue, just slowly building up, and suddenly, smash. He's in Blue's base. He's killing his dudes. There's nothing Blue can do. 
and I think Blue recognises that he's just walked his com forward and so let us give some F's in the chat and pay respects to this commander bravely walking forward to his doom. The bricks are just ignoring him right now but I'm sure that's going to change in a moment. There we go. Boom. Blue goes down 49 minutes into the game and pink team mainly paradox though not to not not to, not to um diminish skills performance of course and Pat, he and Grimplex had a good fight but that was mainly paradox win the game raids and attacks in the beginning a brutal war of attrition at the end do you think that blue could have held out with that higher eco of his if he'd gone just a little more into air and been able to counter the whalers or was it more important to find an immediate answer to those megaliths tell me in the comments below while you're down there Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey, because I am the Commissar, I will see you next time.